This video shot on the Croatian border with Bosnia on March 23rd, 2020 is part of a cache of materials obtained by the NGO No Name Kitchen detailing an illegal pushback carried out on Croatian soil. When put together, these materials show, in better detail than previously available, exactly how these violent operations are carried out by the Croatian state. As a member of the Regional Grassroots Coalition, the Border Violence Monitoring Network, our investigation aims to present these materials and to determine the location, timing, and circumstances surrounding the pushback carried out that day. Everywhere the beach, everywhere, I mean, head, leg, arms, everywhere. No police stick, only jungle stick. Very, very beach. Go to Bosnia, go to Bosnia. Okay, okay, And then Vapas on the no, no, no back me, Croatia. We on the Croatia, see at the name, nay, see on the Divan, Kubanda, Tarle, and the Divan. In the course of this investigation, we spoke to four different members of the transit group that was pushed back that day. In order to understand how this group came to be pushed back from Croatia to Bosnia, it is first necessary to take a look at how these people were initially apprehended. All four men described that in the weeks prior, they had left from the Sturlich area of Bosnia-Herzegovina and traveled on foot over the course of approximately 10 days through the Croatian interior. According to one of the men, the group traveled across Croatia's D1 and D23 roads before crossing the E71 and E65 highways and then finally passing over the D3 road. The group was then described as having crossed the Kopl River into Slovenia on March 19th. We were able to retrieve location data embedded in one of the witnesses' phones, which showed their crossing into Slovenia, and later showed them continuing on to the forests surrounding the Slovenian village of Kočebje. They stayed in this area for several days as they waited for a smuggler who never arrived. During this time, they ran out of food and water, and made the decision to go down to the nearest road, number 214, where they were allegedly found by Slovenian authorities who brought the entire group to the police station in Kočevje. The media outlets Der Spiegel and SRF asked the Slovenian Ministry of the Interior to comment on these accusations, to which they responded by confirming the apprehension of this group on March 21st and detaining them in Kočevje for two nights before transferring them to Croatian custody. The Slovenian ministry alleged that the group members did not express an intention to claim asylum and that their actions were in line with national law. I ask, I have stay here. No, no, go to, uh, go to Bosnia. Uh, all people can ask asylum. These policemen, no, no asylum, go to uh, Bosnia. The men described spending two nights in the Slovenian station before being transported to the border with Croatia, where they were allegedly handed over to Croatian authorities. Upon their transfer to Croatia, the witnesses described being transported in a police van to the Bosnian border. The place on the Bosnian side of the border is called Poljana. After a long investigation, we were able to identify the individual who is shown crying in the video, as well as three other members of the group. All witnesses described a cruel and violent pushback procedure.
carried out by Croatian authorities. They took mobile, they took everything. If someone have wear uh, jackets, they take half jacket, they take off trousers, they put some oil in their fire, and after they start beating. After open a door, no, mask, police mask. Oh, mask. Yes, yes, mask. Come, fuck, come, one by one. And after uh, near the river, small river, small, jump, go to uh, Bosnia. One of the group members told us that he was able to hide his phone in his underwear during this entire ordeal. After he was pushed back from Croatia to Bosnia, he took his phone out of his pants and began recording. This picture, taken before the first video, shows two men with wet clothing, no winter jackets, no backpacks, and no shoes on their feet. The man on the right is the same individual from the first video. The men's clothes are wet. They described having their shoes taken from them by Croatian officers and being forced into a river near the border. In the background, four individuals can be seen leading the procedures. While the video does not allow us to definitively verify the identities or affiliations of these men, context clues about the appearance of their clothing allow us to offer suggestions. Three of the individuals have black balaclava masks over their faces. Several are wearing white gloves, which, according to past footage published by the Border Violence Monitoring Network, have been worn by Croatian authorities during pushback procedures. One of the individuals wears a uniform, as well as a hat and badge, similar to those worn by Croatian border police officers. Two are wearing olive drab jackets, which bear some semblance to the coats worn by the country's special police units. One of the two can be seen wearing an item strapped across his thigh, which has a similar silhouette to the thigh-mounted pistol holsters distributed to the country's special police units. Another individual wears a black jumpsuit, similar to those worn by officers within Croatia's intervention police units. Here, we have a stabilized section of the first video, which shows the four alleged Croatian authorities appear to form a line of control on the Croatian side of the border. Three of the four witnesses described being beaten with a long, thick pole matching the appearance of the weapon held by this individual. Another one of the masked men is shown here to be holding a long pole with what appears to be a string attached to its end. This matches the description of three of the witnesses. The video then appears to show another group approaching the border, being led by another group of masked men. On the way, one of these men strikes one of the group members with a long club.
As the group approaches, the officer closest to the border turns around and raises his hands up in the air, signaling them to stop. Here, we can see that this new group consists of what appears to be four officers and three group members. After several seconds, it appears that they are ordered again to back away from the border. The man who filmed the video inferred that this was because the alleged officers had seen him recording on his phone and became apprehensive about completing the pushback. By stitching together this video, we were able to create a panorama which gives a better description of the landscape of the pushback scene. This will come in use later as we determine the exact location and geography of the pushback. A short time later, the man recorded a second video. This time, it seems to clearly show one of the masked men chasing a man towards the border. We have stabilized and expanded this portion of the clip. In this section of the video, it is possible to see what appears to be two masked men throwing sticks and stones at the men that they had just pushed back. This matches witness testimony that we were able to gather. Police take stones, they put in stone, they, they, they throw stone. They are throw stone at people. We were able to obtain the metadata from the first video, which shows that it was taken on the afternoon of March 23rd near the Bosnian village of Poljana, along the Croatian border. In order to verify this information, we needed to look back to the video for context clues. When put together, the two panoramas made from these videos show a clear set of structures. The videos depict at least three building structures and what appear to be two shed structures. Through our Blender recreation, we are able to see that these structures align exactly with a portion of the border outside of the village of Poliana. The closest urban center to Poliana is the city of Velika Kladusha which is approximately 15 kilometers away from the village. After collecting each other in small groups, the pushed back men began their way to the closest road before starting the long walk back to Velika Kladusha. These four men, for example, were taken in by a local Bosnian who lived close by to the pushback site and given warm drinks, food, and clean clothes. 
the man sitting second from the left was shown in the primary source video. Earlier this year, while in Brussels, the Croatian Minister of the Interior denied allegations of violent pushbacks and claimed that Croatia protects the external borders of the European Union in accordance with domestic, European, and international laws. This investigation poses a serious challenge to that claim. Our research shows that on March 23, 2020, at least four people on the move were violently pushed back from Croatia into Bosnia in the Poljana region. Since 2017, the organizations and activists within the Border Violence Monitoring Network have recorded over 400 in-depth testimonies of illegal pushbacks from Croatia. While the video material from this investigation shows just one case, when understood in conjunction with the hundreds of similar accounts from this section of the Croatian border, the footage plays out as a microcosm of what we know to be a daily practice in 2020.